Authorities roll out vaccination in urban clinics. PM pledges half a million for SMEs. Electricity for rural settlers after 49 years. Good evening and welcome. This is Monday's News. I'm Kilawani. The NCD Provincial Health Authority will roll out another phase of the COVID-19 vaccination starting tomorrow. The city's health authority plans on expanding the vaccination sites due to the less number of people turning up for the initial vaccination at the Rita Flynn venue. There will be three teams conducting the vaccination rollout in the three open electorates in the nation's capital. Initially, the people were given COVID-19 vaccination at the Rita Flynn facility. Starting tomorrow, three teams will assist with the rollout of the vaccination in Mosby South, Mosby Northeast and Mosby Northwest. In a news conference today, NCD Provincial Health Authority Acting CEO Dr. Maru Garo highlighted some reasons why the rollout should take place. Our strategy is now is uh, just, uh, two things, uh, three things, to get to reach out to those, uh, the communities uh, and improve the courage in NCD. And the second one is to be able to complete the doses within the you know, expiry dates. Uh, and three is to be able to you know, imp uh, increase the number of those uh, who are sick, the sick ones, those with comorbidities. Even though 14,000 doses have been completed, Garo says 90% are from corporate workers. He says there is still more to be done. So we're quite happy in the, in the program, uh, the operations that we are conducting at the moment. The only thing that uh, we want to make sure is that uh, whilst we, the corporate employees are coming forward, uh, we realize that the, the other you know, important uh, part of the uh, component of the population, uh, those ones maybe not, to, not well to do kind of uh, people and illiterate and uh, those kind of people, they're more or less those ones out in the communities, out in the settlements. And so we kind of uh, felt uh, responsible that we need to make sure that uh, we improve the coverage. With Delta variant now in the city, the Provincial Health Authority says it is important for public to get vaccinated for the good of everyone. So we will uh, try to protect ourselves and protect our families, our loved ones. Uh, if you are vaccinated and your, your family members or the community is not vaccinated and it's just you. And the risk is so big in that community. So as much as possible, many of the members in the community must be vaccinated. Dr. Rafael confirmed that AstraZeneca vaccine will still be used for the rollout vaccination. Porivai National MTV News. The Central Province Agro-Tourism Show ended yesterday and was attended by the Prime Minister James Marpe. During his speech, Marpe told the public to have a strong savings culture in order to grow business and also provide for other necessities. The Central Province Agro-Tourism Show, which ended yesterday at Quikila Station in the Rigo District, was an opportunity for the people of Central Province and the public to see what avenues that were available to improve agriculture and also find market for their goods. Prime Minister James Marape was present at the closing and reaffirmed the government's support for MSMEs and SMEs as he encouraged the locals to make use of government allocated funding for soft loans. Look forward to Central Province people. Please, you go and register yourself with BSV and get an, pick up an account or microbank and pick up an account. Our government deliberately putting money in partner banks so that if you have your own 10,000 kina, you could borrow another 10,000 kina and add value into doing what you're doing already and moving the next mile going up. The Prime Minister who himself grew up in a household in which his mother was in the informal sector encouraged the gathered to have a strong savings culture. I speak to you simply, and I'm passionate about this simply because I am a son of a market mama. I am a son of a market mama. My mother earns about 
20 kina a day doing her sales. In fact, she earns about 40, 50 kina because when I was growing up, I would spy in her bag. Just to see how much she's collecting. She collects about 50, 60 kina, but she normally saves about 20 kina every day, faithfully. At the end of every year, she would have around six, 7,000 kina so that her children have school fee for the next year. The Agriculture Showcase event had representation from all the districts in Central Province, which converged at the Quikila station for the three-day event. Prime Minister James Marape also mentioned to the public that funding for MSMEs and SMEs through provincial governments was also available. Last year, we gave two million kinates under COVID time. Long help him. All legal farmers, legal business. Go ask him all member of the backside. No one asking me, walk me, look at the money now. Give him all finish. In all that so, right across the Papua New Guinea. Freely Sukina, National MTV News. Prime Minister James Marpe pledged 500,000 kina to local SMEs who showcased their products during the Central Provincial Agro-Tourism Show held over the weekend in Kuikila. The show had over 60 rural-based SMEs within the Central Province who exhibited their produce. This included local food farmers and fisheries, covers, cane basket and mat weavers, artists and few others. The three-day Central Provincial Agro-Tourism Show ended on a high note yesterday with funding support from the national government. Prime Minister James Marape says the 500,000 kina pledged is to help local SMEs open business accounts with banks and to assist them with other startup costs. All farmers who have stalled today here, we will, national government will give a bonus of 500,000 kina to Governor Agrobe and his team uh, coordinating this program. So they will assist those farmers who got stalls here. With Central Province being one of the major suppliers of fresh produce, PM Marape says the farmers have the upper end to feed the entire Port Mosby and should continue to work hard. Central Province, I want you to be the food supplier to Port Mosby City. Because I know Port Mosby is the biggest market there. Governor Grobe has been working on accessing uh, good land in, in the city. We'll still work on that land for us. Specialized market for Central Province produce to go into that place and we could supply Port Mosby City. The agro-tourism show was also a linking point for many untapped local business opportunities. Many of these local SME exhibitors were happy about the level of exposure and how they were able to connect and network with potential buyers within the three days of show. We, we already have maybe two to three, two to three potential importers that talk directly to them who came straight from the village, not in town. Yeah, and they're so excited and they even had tears. They said, now we're gonna go back and work hard to extend our coffee and vanilla and cocoa. This show was an initiative of Central Province Governor Robert Agarobe to assist local SMEs in Central Province to connect with relevant stakeholders and potential buyers, a pathway to expanding their business. So this show has been very, very successful as far as I'm concerned because people now can see the connectivity between everybody that is concerned. And like anything else that can happen, you need a lot of government intervention. Government needs to come in and show its interest in driving the agenda, the agenda of the, mul the bulk of our people who, are, who live in the communities. Suli Suli, National MTV News. The Agro-Tourism Expo showcased some local dirimans in the central province. Young individuals like Killer Gege Jr., who has worked to improve the lives of his people through his livestock rearing and agricultural garden produce. The Central Province Agro-Tourism Expo had some exciting stalls at the venue over the past three days, with livestock also on display. Kila Gege Jr. was at the show over the weekend with some of his livestock and plants as well. I'm experienced my life from my Kariko district and my father is from here, Rigo district. I'm just here to showcase a little bit of what I'm doing. I'm a DD man, student here, currently based at home. Kila had a variety of livestock on display with ducks, chickens, pigs and goats all under his care. 
As you can see, there are some beds here. We have um, ducks here, blue ducks, native chickens, the native village chicken they're trying to promote. Um, we have a pig breed here that um, we're trying to promote here in this district. It's a breed that right now not many people have, and many people coming here to the stores now are very interested. They want this breed of pig and also goats. Kila said that goats especially were low-maintenance animals and good for the village setting. They graze and unlike other livestock, you, you will need capital like feed. Huh? So these goats are good. Living in the rural area, what started out as a hobby soon found Kila studying to improve his trade and it is a success story. Actually, it's a hobby. It's a hobby that I do all this time, but then I actually went to do some studies for agriculture, in Highlands Agriculture. So I completed my studies in 2018. So ever since when I came back, I've been based here at home, getting my hands dirty, doing practical things. And these are some of the things that I've been doing since the 2018. With his background in studying agriculture, he continues to help improve local crops wherever he can in his local area. Banana, yam, um, betel nut, taro, cassava, this, all these basic crops, I'm, I'm, I work with them and that's what I do. So whenever DL comes around, I do extension with them here in the local area, as well as Abau, and I work together with the local farmers and also mainly try to help and disseminate information is the main key. Freli Sukina, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. More stories when we come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. The proposed Mining and Health Safety Bill targets a proactive approach towards the safety of mine workers. The bill, being reviewed after so many years, now looks at improving clauses in the Mining Act to manage risks for mine workers whilst at work. Based on discussions from the fourth consultative forum on mine and health safety work bill, more emphasis was put on the safety of mine workers. The proposed bill is anticipated to prevent major catastrophes and hold the employer accountable in the event that the mine worker becomes injured while on duty. Now, in the absence of of law that the mining industry has been performing well simply because we have adopted what we call the best industry practice and that has been common day and when we say best industry practice we say we mean common sense and common sense have kept our minds safe all alone but we have also introduced change in culture from reactive approach to proactive approach the Mining Act currently in use was adopted in 1997, while the Mining Safety Regulation was adopted in 1936. Some of the, the clauses in the Mining Safety Act are not even friendlier. For example, Section 23 of the All Mining Act, uh, Safety Act, prohibits female employees to work underground. And this is one of the... Uh, the laws that must be changed. Much of the clauses in the Mining Act are outdated and do not fully capture the safety of mine workers and the surrounding communities. For the consultative forum in the southern region, Octeri Mining Limited gave a feedback on the proposed bill. Thekla Gunga, National MTV News. 
One group of settlers in the Anglim South Wagi electorate of Jiwaka province now have access to electricity after more than four decades. Abi Block consists of people from all over the country who migrated to the border of Jiwaka and Western Highlands provinces but was mostly forgotten due to their location. Under the Rural Electrification Project, local member Joe Cooley has assisted the people with this vital service. It is a 2.5 kilometers power project worth 250,000 kina and is fraction of a 7.5 kilometer rural electrification project. Local MP Joe Cooley encouraged the RV people to look after such project that will enable them to benefit from other road and infrastructure projects. Power and the changing whole life ring. Power big nini blow you and study in Chetlang room long end. Ever using laptop, ever study, in the neighbors, ever you like them solo all the time, in the by them carousel all the time. These people are 4th and 5th generations whose forefathers settled here since 1972. Next year would mark 50 years of living in this area. They felt left out in service delivery by previous governments and that receiving electricity has encouraged them to participate in other activities. This project is one of the many needs that will alleviate poverty and improve their way of living. <laughs> However, such projects come with huge responsibilities. PNG Power Limited encouraged them to be responsible citizens by not carrying out illegal connections. The problem we are facing the power line because some bloody statements have come out. Why look more similar to that blackout? You know, people are PNG Power, people are staff, people are working under your plan. So the digital service now and come back. Amazon yet. The Avi Rural Electrification Project opening is one of 14 that has been completed and ready for commissioning. Kuli said he is delivering his policies and people must support in taking care of multi-million kina projects. Vasanata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. The PNGTA Momase Regional Office was officially reopened in Leh on the weekend after 12 years of closure. This follows the reopening of the New Guinea Islands Regional Office in Rabaul, East New Britain, and the Highlands Regional Office in Mount Hagen, Western Highlands Province. The Momase Regional Office will serve teachers from Morbe, East Morbe, East and West Sipic, and Medang provinces. The national executives of the PNG Teachers Association in Port Mosby were in late last week Friday to reopen the PNG TA Momasa Regional Office. The office is located at Lay's Top Town 8th Street area at the top floor of Mr. Price Building. PNG TA's National President Aita Sanagepe, Vice President Sinel Kou, and the General Secretary David Kumbami officiated the ceremony. The Momasa Regional Office to serve teachers in the Mumasa region is now uh, reopened this afternoon. As so of this day, the office will reopen. Uh, by that, we mean the regional secretary, your appointment is in order, and the NMC acknowledge and approve your appointment as the regional secretary for Mumasa. After the declaration of the election, the results went to the office of the industrial registrar, and registrar, after checking through, registered. So all of you are registered already. When there's a vacant, the PNG constitution allows a national president to use his discretionary power to appoint and co-opt it. So we have co-opted people. They all are. In Morbe, I would like to appeal to the governor. I thank governor with your education advisor. Accept these people now as I speak. According to the national president, Mr. Sanagepe, former PNG TA executives of Mumase, have been operating without an office for 12 years. The reopening of Momasa's regional office follows New Guinea Islands regional office in Rabaul, East New Britain, and the Highlands regional office in Mount Hagen, Western Highlands province. There's a lot of issues still unsettled that we need to talk about. And I thank you this morning that you 
took time out to see our PPA to clear the air on um, the Morobe Provincial uh, Executives in regard to PNGTA. PNGTA is also in consultation with the Morobe Provincial Government to get all public servants, especially the teachers, insured through PNGTA's insurance company. And the friends, executives, you have a very big role to play. There are teachers out there in the rural parts of Morobe. They don't know what union is about. And hundreds of them are not members of the union. Julie Badui Oa. National MTV News, Lay. Nine former inmates from Morabe's Boima prison have completed a training that now gives them a chance at finding jobs and starting small business. The opportunity was made possible through the New Life Outside the Bars program. The program was initiated by a voluntary consultant with Boimo, Maisen Mai, and was supported by Talkstrat PNG and other organizations in Lay. Thank you. Three participants from the New Life Outside the Bus program were invited to a talkback show on NBC Radio in Lay to talk about the program. They were grateful for the opportunity to be part of the program, saying it would give them a new direction in life after prison. Thank you, Lord. This a new life outside the bar program. I'm giving me a second chance. By giving me a strong law, me am starting this law on efficient, I'm going to so that I can build up this law. I'm trying to look forward to this law. I'm going to send him the inside, I'm going to talk straight consultant. How law? By you motivating me, something we used to make him before, you support it, you said, let's make him long. I think it's a program when we go through long, I'm helping him be better. Elvina is one of the only two female participants in the program. She aspires to run a trucking company one day. Me dream on now. Plan a goal of life, blow me is me like only one plus big plus trucking company. Because me look almost me got potential inside of this life. George was always in and out of prison, and this is the first time he has volunteered for something good, as he had described it. Me like law, time law, come up law. How about me play come up? Or making me play law, look look law, future blow me plan. The nine participants in the new life outside the bus program are made up of parolees, probationers and discharged prisoners. The main objective of the program is to help minimize crime in communities and the number of reoffenders who end up in Buimo. The program emerged from the vision of a voluntary consultant with Buimo, Maisen Mai. Maisen was also a former inmate and has been involved in the prison's rehabilitation program for three years. Rehabilitation is all rolling out in every prison's law, PNG, but reintegration, you know, got money, so all you know, fully functioning, uh, run inside law, all get a prison. So that's the program has partnered with Talkstrat consultants and some other organizations in Lay. Talkstrat consultants train the participants in writing CVs and cover letters. They also use their contacts to send CVs to companies seeking jobs for the participants. Maisen said the number of participants is expected to increase next year as the interest grows among inmates. We have come up with a pilot project law inside Lo Buimo. And this block, this law now, but I can look, look, law, how me plug also on them. So me plug can help me play at law, adjust me play at law. Charlene Airy, National MTV News, Lay. And now looking at the Nest Fund market report, the Kina opened unchanged at 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina will buy 0.2775 US dollars, 0.3710 Australian dollars, 0.3926 New Zealand dollars and 29.89 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading lower, coffee and copper closed higher, cocoa closed lower, palm oil closed higher, crude oil is trading lower and copper closed lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading higher, the All Ordinaries is trading higher. Tukai Sports.
Welcome to Chukai Sports. The NCD Money Plus Vipers have put an end to the Lace Next Tigers winning streak after round seven of the Intercity Cup. The competition leaders fell short by four points despite the late comeback. Vipers sealed the match with 20 points, defeating the Tigers on 16. They've got the home boys the Lace Next Tigers, coming from a win last week against the Croton Ella Wigman, hoped for another smooth victory over the Port Mosby Vipers yesterday. In a thrilling match to wind down round seven of the Intercity Cup, the Vipers held off a strong, fierce defensive effort to calm the Tigers. Very easy try to the Vipers. The Lace Next Tigers' demolition attack has been a significant factor in winning most of the games in the competition. Oh, he is half a break and it's going right through back on the inside. Despite this advantage, the Tigers were caught napping with errors and penalties, which the Vipers capitalized on to register points. And he's down. He moves in, puts boot to ball, and he's nailed it. Yeah, we, we just. Uh, Probably let ourselves down well, with, with the discipline. Uh, uh, you, you can't well, win games uh, with sin bins and how do you go back uh, 12 the, players. You know, uh, you know, I think we played with 12 players for about 30 minutes because we got sin bin three times there. So, A late try by Tigers kept the momentum alive for an upset, but the Vipers sneaked their way through on full time to put an end to the Tigers' winning streak. Pins his ears back, foot down, and he raises away to score under the uprise. But despite the loss, Tigers coach Stanley Tappen is confident the team is on a track for another grand final appearance. The club will be preparing for another tough brawl against the Rabaul Gurriers over the weekend. No, we, we uh, you know, uh, every game is tough. Uh, no teams are picking up, so uh, look, once again, we'll just go back and work hard. You know, you lose some, you win some, so uh, we'll, take, we'll take that loss and, and um, once back next week, hopefully. Suli Suli, Trukai Sports. The SPPNG Hunters returned to their winning ways with an exciting 34-22 victory over Northern Pride in last weekend's Interest Super Cup Country Week round of matches. Solo One has scored three tries, helping to inspire the Hunters who were able to claw their way back into the match after a shaky start when the Pride scored two tries in the opening 16 minutes. And the PNG Hunters in active... The SP PNG Hunters claimed their fourth win this season as they managed to contain the Northern Pride, 34 points to 22, in round 14 of the Intra Super Cup. Uncrossed. The Northern Pride scored the first try of the match after 10 minutes through Sean Bowen. Moments later, the Pride scored the second try, with Grant Anderson crashing over the try line. The Hunters registered their first points through Brendan Lima. Solo Wane was at hand again for the Hunters, budging his way to score his second try in the early stages of the second half. The Pride kept the pressure on the Hunters with back-to-back -back tries to Matthew Musumichi and Bennett Lewis. The Hunters hit back when hat-trick hero Solo Wane left the Pride defenders in the dust as he raced away to score his third try of the match. Charlie Simon then chipped in with a try of his own, extending the Hunters' lead. However, the Pride were not done yet with Joshua Stuckey crossing over in the 77th minute. The Hunters had the final word on the stroke of full time when Junior Rao raced down the sideline to score under the upright. The Hunters finally ending their losing streak with a spirited win, 34 points to 22 over the Northern Pride. Huxley Lovai, Trukai Sports. And that ends Trick Eye Sports, the weather report for the next 24 hours coming up next. Stay with us. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus, with you always. Weather forecast for tonight, southern region, Port Mosby mostly fine, Daru and Alotau partly cloudy, 
Kerama, partly cloudy with patchy drizzles. Popondeta, mostly fine although cloudy at times. In the Momase region, Lei, Wiwek and Vanimo, partly cloudy with a shower or two. Medang, mostly fine. The New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau, Kavien, Kokopo and Rabaul, partly cloudy with a shower or two. Kimbe, partly cloudy with some afternoon showers. Buka, cloudy with some showers. And the Highlands region, all centres, morning fog patches clearing into partly cloudy periods with few afternoon showers. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. And that's the news, sports and weather for today, Monday, 19th of July, 2021. On behalf of the entire MTV News team right across the country, pleasant viewing, good night.